And do you want to give a little broad background for the audience that doesn't know uh, where you guys are coming from with your fittest series? Yeah, so I'll kind of give you a, a brushstroke history. Ten years ago, 2009-ish, I was uh, just getting out of college, had my own video production company, was doing documentary work on the side, and my goal was like, I want to go make movies in Hollywood. Uh, found CrossFit, fell in love with it in 2008, and was paying for my gym membership by making videos for the local gyms. I love how it's bleeding together already. <laughs> That's so cool. CrossFit, I reached out to them and said, hey, I'm here in Salt Lake City. I do videos for these gyms. If you guys ever need work, let me know. Within five minutes, I had an email back saying, let's have a phone call. That led to like a six-hour phone interview the next day. To a year later, I was moving down to Cross, CrossFit in Santa Cruz. So I was in Salt Lake City at the time. And my first, one of my first assignments was to help them figure out how to get a pilot for a TV show to then be able to get their sh sport onto ESPN. Mm -hmm. So Marston and I worked together at the time and uh, we knew each other at the time. He came down and helped me and we pre produced a pilot that covered like a live event of what the sport could look like. Three months later, we're on ESPN and I'm directing that sitting in like a TV truck. I've never done that. And saying like, camera oh, one, ready one, take he two. He was pale. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, like it was a, it was a stressful six day weekend. This is the live event. This isn't any stuff that's recorded and then you get to process it later. No, this is oh, live. Man. And then, and then after the live event of the weekend, uh, we got into post-produced shows. So like World's Strongest Man and American Ninja's Warriors, like they make it kind of feel live, but there's definitely like some post-production edits to them to make the story flow better. Yeah. And I, so we did that with our shows there where we produced, I think it was like 12 shows. 12 half hour shows Jeez. that like, obviously like we'd never done that before and like CrossFit had never done that before. And it was like a very new venture and everything like that. But it was uh, like probably one of the most growing learning processes of uh, like, starting my career mm -hmm. yeah and and Heber did an amazing job we'd be in the recording booth like re-voicing the, the 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 competitions as if they were live so it was like it, you would get some pretty interesting reactions to like oh we've seen this probably like 30 times but we're recording it as if it's happening live you know yeah like oh man we need more energy because you haven't seen this 40 times like, <laughs> this is the first time you're seeing it and, and we have to pretend it's exciting it's yeah. not just someone lifting a weight so we got through those and that, that was like, that was like a crash course of like how to do this. And then 2012, it was still like another thing like that. I knew very early on, I didn't want to do live TV. Like that's not my thing. That's not my jam. I like to take time to process and tell the best story possible, not just the story that's happening um, and that you happen to capture. So uh, by 2013, I had pushed away from like, I don't want to do live stuff. And CrossFit was cool enough to be like, no, we want you to grow. We want you to have creative freedom. And I got a lot of creative freedom because of how successful the ESPN shows had been doing. Um, and the and the work, like they recognized the hard effort that Marsden and I had put in. And so we got to do some really cool things kind of around that area. And in 2014, they said, hey, we want to do like a YouTube feature film. We want to do like a documentary that covers the sport. I had done like a 30 minute short documentary on, on the 2013 CrossFit games and the 2014 CrossFit games. There was, there was like one story where I was like, that's the story of the year. It's this guy who's, who's won the CrossFit games from 2011, 12 and 13. So he's won it three years. He's going to come and win it for his fourth year. And he's told me in private that he's going to retire at the end of this year. Oh wow! And I was like, this guy is, this is going to happen. No one can touch this guy. It's going to be the only story that matters. And so I, uh, I got the green light to, to then create this movie called Froning. And it's Froning, the fittest man in history. I think it's still available on Netflix. It showed up in Hulu the other day. I don't know how that's working. Uh, CrossFit was, they said, cool, let's do it. And so I shot it. And it took me about a year to edit the whole thing. And by the time I was getting close to finishing, I, their, their plan for it was always to just go straight to YouTube. Like, we're just going to dump this thing onto YouTube. And I was like, look, for me, this isn't just a YouTube video. This is an art. This is a feature film. Like we've put a lot of effort into this thing. Like let it go to a platform that is rec like recognized by peers of filmmaking to be a feature film. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that took some back and forth where they didn't like for them, they just wanted the eyeballs on it to then kind of translate into maybe people come to the gym or building the sport. So everybody that was above me within the company had different like goals of what they thought the thing should be. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, the person above me, <clears throat> Sevan Matosian, who Matosian, who is the executive producer on the film, helped us out a little bit and pushed it through to go on iTunes and go, uh, 
yeah, basically, I think we just went on iTunes initially. Mm-hmm. The first day we launched on iTunes, we were the number three movie on the iTunes total charts. And they hit us up and said, hey, who the crap are you guys? (laughs) Like, what is this movie? How have you done this? And I was completely blown away by the response. Like, people loved the movie. They they told their friends about it. They posted on social media about it. And it did extremely well. Like, I want to say the movies above it were like Jurassic World. Um... I can't remember the second one. And then it was our movie. Something like, in 2014. Yeah. yeah. Two, well, it was 2015 at this point. Okay. So it was like, it was, it was pretty epic for me as like a filmmaker. I'm like, I'm seeing my movie right next to Jurassic World on this big image thing on, on iTunes. From there, the next day, Gravitas Ventures tweeted me and they said, hey, we've seen your movie. We love it. We want to represent you. We want to distribute your film. Ah. And so then from there, like we went, we we jumped the process of like most people make a movie and then they shop it around at like film festivals till a distribution goes, oh, I want your movie. I'm going to buy it and take it and sell it for you. Mm -hmm. So we just skipped that because we put it on iTunes ourselves and then they came to us because of the success of it. So like we had a built an audience. So because of that, they then took it and shopped it around and got it on Hulu, which then the next year led Netflix to being like, oh, well, we want that movie. So by the time we got to the 2015 movie, Fittest on Earth, the story of the 2015 games, um, Netflix was extremely interested. And from there, they've they've picked up every movie that we've put out. It's awesome. Money follows value. Yeah. yeah. You guys put out the value. There's the money. Yeah. <laughs>